Hi, I'm Roger Webster and this is my friend Richard Marshall and we're going to help you through a couple of little points in a famous piece, Carnival of Venice, hopefully. Uh, Richard, uh, would you like to uh, show them your immaculate triple tongue and explain why it's important to, to get clarity? I can. So how I'd uh, actually approach that would be to try and keep the syllable of the triple tongue in the tataka really nice and clear and even all the time. And along with obviously good valve coordination as well, but mainly as well keeping a good airflow all the time. So I'd definitely practice it starting slow, tap, tap, ka, tap, 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 ka, and then just gradually with the metronome, up the metronome to a speed that you, you feel most comfortable at. Make sure you don't do a speed that's too uncomfortable and, uh, and go for it. And enjoy. Yeah, I remember Richard um, playing this uh, in concerts with his band over the years. Uh, always immaculate, always commented by people that it was always crystal clear and clean. You could hear every note, absolutely every note. And um, Richard, what are your thoughts on, for certain pieces, maybe not this one in particular, putting the, the throat articulation, the curse syllable, in the centre to separate uh, notes? Yeah, um, obviously uh, what Roger means there is the, the traditional way of triple tongue is either tataka, a lot of players as well go takata. Um, again, I think it's, it's much much to do with the personal point of view. You've got to you've got to reach kind of um, be comfortable with with either way, whatever works for you. There's there's no set way. I personally use tataka. I know some great players use takata, but I think what I was saying earlier is just keep the keep the evenness all the time. Yeah, perfect. Right, moving on to variation four. Now this is one, would you like to explain something about this picture? I would do, yeah. Variation 4 is probably one of the most hated variations in this solo. Um, because it's such a long solo, and then you get to the obviously Variation 4, and it's dealing with a lot of um, common aspects of playing, such as airflow, consistent valve technique, and obviously trying to get the get the main tune out at the same time as, as going you know really fast with the valves as well. So uh, I'm going to hand over to my good friend Roger, who's Thank going you. to play variation four for us. First of all, I'll just separate it into the two parts that you need to hear. First of all, you've got the main theme going underneath. <laughs> together to make them smooth and continuous. Mostly. All right. Um, again, when you when you playing low notes moving to the higher register, it's important to make sure that the airflow is continuous and low notes you direct <coughs> right into the centre of the cup whenever possible and the high notes will take care of themselves generally. Keep them nice and light and don't use too much tongue, too much frontal attack with the tongue. Richard, vibrato. Vibrato, yeah. I think vibrato obviously in brass band terms is, is obviously a main, main aspect of cornet playing especially, um, especially in England and um, Obviously vibrato, what vibrato is, is obviously decoration of your airstream. We all know that the most, one, probably one of the most important things of playing any musical instrument, especially brass instrument, is a good core sound all the time, good core airflow. Vibrato just makes it sound pretty all the time. Um, do you want to talk about some kind of uh, vibrato exercise, Roger? Yeah, uh, I think to start with, um, it's important that vibrato is seen as a decoration. It's another technique, something that you need to practice and be able to be in control of. It's no good just using a vibrato without any discerning qualities at all or just having it uh, there without your control. It's important to understand it and be able to turn it on and off. So the first thing is, make sure you're happy with the core sound, that it's, when it's straight, it's nice and even and good, well-supported air. So if you're happy with the basic sound, then you can start to experiment with vibrato, starting putting it on in single beats. So 
sort of crotchet beats in a bar, then quaver beats, the triplets, and so you're in control of it. It will sound a little mechanical to start with, but you will build up uh, control of vibrato, so. <laughs> Vibrato. Several different types or methods of using vibrato. One is <coughs> using jaw or lip vibrato where you're altering the pitch of the note gradually, just slightly, slightly sharp, slightly flat, above but within the acceptable pitch limit of a note. The other is using hand vibrato where you're altering the pressure on the lips so that makes it slightly sharp and slightly flat. And I guess the other one is pulsing the air. Uh, which is probably not um, my favourite. I know Sir Richard doesn't like it either. It sort of sounds like a washing machine when it's winding down. You're pulsing the air and you risk interrupting the air column. Uh, so can you just play something nice and simple from this, yeah. Richard, but using what you'd say is your everyday cornic played vibrato. <laughs> vibrato depends on your particular um, feeling, depends on where you're playing, what you're playing, but really the music dictates the vibrato that you're going to use. You don't just use it indiscriminately, you use it to suit the music and to enhance the music, not to get in the way of the music. Perfect example. Excellent.